All right, welcome back YouTube subscribers. So today we are going to be building out a dry box for my Garmin Striker 4 CV with transducer. It should be a fairly simple build. I got all the tools. I'll show you what those are. I got all the components. I'll show you what those are. Each piece that I uh, use for this build out will be linked in the descriptions down below so that you can find it yourself. So stay tuned and I hope you enjoy. Okay, welcome back. So here's what we have to start with today. We have the chrome battery sealed lead acid battery, which is what I'm going to use. That is a 12 amp, or I'm sorry, 12 volt, 7 amp battery, sealed lead acid. I picked up Outdoor Products Large Watertight Box in Orange. I picked this up off of Amazon. It's the 1.5 liter, 50.7 fluid ounce box. Fits the battery nicely with a little bit of room around the edges. I have the Hopkins accessory extension. So I chose this because I have a battery tender that uses this type of connector. So this will allow me to connect the battery into the tender without having to open it. So I'll show you how we're gonna use this. Roll of scotch electrical tape. I also have eBoot plastic waterproof grommets. So these are going to be uh, an assorted pack um, from PG-13 uh, all the way down to, I believe it's PG-9. So uh, I believe it was about 10 bucks on Amazon. I'm gonna show you which one we're gonna use and how to do that. And then I also have some F1 disconnect pins for the battery. Um, this is what I will be connecting the battery and then into the Hopkins uh, accessory connector. So let's get started. The first thing that we're going to do is we are going to prep the Hopkins connector. So, as you can see, this is has connectors on each end. I don't need connectors on each end. I actually need spliced wires and a connector. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut this in half and I can actually apply this to another application that I need to connect the battery to. So you'll find the middle, fold it in half, use your wire cutters, and cut it. Now you have two separate connectors. I already pre-measured this so I know it'll fit in my box the way I want it to. So, first thing we need to do is take these connectors and strip off a little bit. So, I'm gonna use the 10 gauge stripper. Nope, not 10 gauge. We're gonna go with uh, 12 gauge. Nope. We're gonna go with 14 gauge. And still not good enough, all right. Okay, all right, let's see what we got here. Looks like 16 gauge is gonna be the size that we need. So once you get your tips off, you want to twist them so you don't get any little loose wires. And by the way, I ended up on 18 gauge. All righty, twist these up. All right, so now you should have two raw wires and a connector on the other end. This is where your disconnect pins come in play. You're gonna need two. Now they sell these in different colors and sizes. If you prefer a different color, you can always choose to do so. Uh, not sure if the color is indicative of the sizes, uh, but I picked these up at the local hardware store. So uh, you should be able to find them as well. Now. These are pairs, and as you can see, I just screwed up my selection. I grabbed a pin and a connector, and I actually need 
two connectors. So, real simple. You slide this through. And then you crimp it down. We're not going to use that. We're going to use just a good old pair of pliers. And then for my own satisfaction, I always crimp it down a little bit with a pair of locking vice grips set fully to the bottom. That way I know for a fact that it is actually crimped in there. And that's what it should look like. Nice and flat. So do the same with the white wire. This is where that spin on the wire comes in handy because it does not like to go in here at all. Initial crimp to get it nice and secured. And then A good strong clamp. To make sure that it's seated well. Alright, so you should have two crimped wires. Mine, uh, mine went a little bit over. So we're going to see if we can't trim those up a little bit and uh, make this look a little cleaner. Probably not gonna happen, but... All right, now, before we get further into this, I'm going to test. So obviously, red wire goes to red wire and white wire will go to the black. And now I have a perfectly paired set to connect to. So, these are fairly tight, so sometimes they take a little bit of work to get off. Now we're going to move on to the box itself. So, like I said earlier, outdoor products, large watertight. Uh, it does say that it is watertight. It does not say that it is waterproof, but I don't intend to get it that deep in the water. It's mostly for splash guard and moisture protection. We're going to remove this beautiful white tape that they have provided so that it doesn't completely seal shut. And I like clean. I'm taking off the sticker and I may put my own sticker on here eventually to uh, dress it up a little bit. So at this point this is really uh, all I need is a single connection. However, if you need multi-connection, this tutorial will still work for you. Um, you can go on Amazon and pick up the one to four splitter, which conveniently connects into this adapter piece right here. And then you have four-way battery instead of just one way. So I did leave myself some room for growth um, and whatnot. So as I said before, Battery sits nicely in here with about inch, inch and a half of room right here. So we are going to put our hole right about here. 
So to do that, and I've already pre-measured this, I'm using a half inch drill bit. You can use a paddle bit as well, but um, my experience with paddle bits and plastic is, is that sometimes it can cause cracks and fractures, so I don't uh, tend to use paddle bits on those, but you can choose to do so if you'd like. Got the trusted DeWalt. So, spin you guys a little bit. I'm gonna hang this off the side of the table. And this is where we're gonna drill, right about here. We'll take the battery out and close it up so I can get a little bit better leverage on this. All right, so a little unclean. Totally not what I was expecting but we are prepared to clean up a pin or a hole. So, standard worksman style. Crimpers will work. Just bend that extra little piece off. Fairly clean hole. <coughs> clean it up with the razor blade so that it's flush on the outside because that's really where I wanted to seal is on the outside. Now the grommets do come with rubber gaskets that you can put on there, which I will be putting on there, but they don't really work that well unless you have a good flat surface to seal them to. So, that is now my hole, and we will move on to the grommet. So, as I said earlier, I'm using a PG, PG9, and if you don't know how to check that, on the bottom of the grommet, the wing nut, or the, the nut here, has it stamped. This is actually a PG-11. PG-9. There's not a whole lot of difference between these two. They're only slightly uh, larger than each other. The half inch drill bit didn't work, so we're gonna upgrade to a 5 8 paddle bit and see if that can put a hole the right size in.
appears that it is going to fit very snugly, which is exactly what I wanted. So that's what it should look like. A little hole coming out the side. Now we feed each one of these through. And as I pulled those out, I noticed that there was a to be rubber boot that will go inside of these prongs in here and I will show you that in one second. Alright, so it's fed through. <coughs> And then you have this rubber boot. That rubber boot needs to be inside of these slotted prongs right here. And I'll show you why in a second. So when you clamp this bolt down onto here, what that does is it applies pressure to the cable. And in turn, creates a seal so that that hole is watertight. So I put my battery back in the box and pulled the cables so that they allow for a little bit of slip and slack here. And here we'll focus this down. All I'm doing is tightening this outer nut. And what that is doing is creating a seal on those cables. tighten this because it is plastic in all components and it will snap and break so it is prone to brittleness but what you have is a sealed off dry box with a quick connect and disconnect to allow you to not have to access the battery you don't have to play with the water seal it up put it on the kayak put it on your canoe or your boat or whatever and connect in whatever you need so I took the battery back out, disconnected this. What I have is, is I added some electrical tape to these connectors just to add some extra support. 
and then add the battery back in. Obviously red to red and white to black. And then we clamp down again. All right. Now we're going to add in some foam. To secure and position the battery so that it doesn't slide around because you know fish don't like sound so you don't want your battery sliding all over the place and there's a completely finished battery no real movement and we're good so I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial on how to build a dry box for a kayak I uh, it's fairly easy. I'll link all of the parts down in the base in the comments so that you can see it, click on it, and find it for yourself. Uh, don't, if you like today's video, don't forget to subscribe. Hit the bell so you get notifications of when I post new videos. Uh, coming up soon, I'm going to have a kayak mount. Uh, I'm going to mount the Garmin on there. I'm also going to show you how to connect the Garmin to the dry box. Uh, there's a little cable adapter that needs to be used there. And... Uh, We'll go from there. So happy casting. I'll see you shortly.